Alberta has put about 2.3 million capital investment into this uh, industry to produce 46 plants, 23 of which are ethanol producing and 23 of which are biodiesel producing. The ethanol plants are capable of producing 1.8 billion liters annually and the biodiesel plants altogether are capable of producing 966 million liters of biodiesel annually. Alberta is somewhat a fairly good place for these renewable energies because of the fact that a feedstock is easily available to them and relatively cheap depending on the source. The equipment investment can be 0 0.5 to 100 million dollars usually depending on the size of the operation from a farm sized operation all the way to a whole commercial sized operation. The increase in the price of energy over the last couple of years is also an incentive for people to start moving into this more low carbon based economy and support these types of technology and processes. Operation costs can, be, can also be reduced by uh, the plant self-producing part or all of the energy they need for the process with their own fuel. So in conclusion, basically the viability of these is heavily based on region, whether that region has the industries already established to provide it with feedstocks for a relatively cheap price, where it's not going to conflict with food prices and uh, cattle feedstock prices. The government incentives here as well and regulations on emissions are also another big uh, incentive for people to look into these technologies here and invest in furthering the technology that we already have. I'll now talk to you about biodiesel and the pros of this fuel. Um, so like ethanol, it's renewable and biodegradable. So the resources it is made from uh, are regenerable, not finite. It's also biodegradable, so if it's spilt in the environment, it's going to have less of an impact than other petrochemicals because it can be broken down by the microorganisms and bacteria already present in that environment. Uh, for feedstocks, it can use crops or waste streams from other processes such as forestry industry, biomass. Using canola is pretty good because in Alberta there's 4 million acres of it planted annually, so there's no shortage of that. And in the last few years, the price of canola has gone down enough that it makes more economic sense for farmers to start selling it as a fuel source rather than just for food. Canola also has a conversion ratio of one to one by volume. So one meter cubed of canola going in is going to equal one meter cubed of biodiesel out, which is a very good conversion rate uh, compared to a lot of other processes. It can also use waste as the feedstock from other processes. This is good because it creates a source of revenue where there wasn't one before. And it also can reduce costs of waste management solutions that were employed before uh, they were taking this as a feedstock. Uh, this, in turn, helps local businesses and uh, farmers by buying the farmers' crops for product. It also reduces the emissions by about 80% when compared to regular diesel, which is a huge amount. Um, particulate matter, hydrocarbons, and carbon monoxide are also reduced out of the tailpipe. So first of all, it has the same problem as ethanol, where in some regions it can be a problem because of its massive land use. It also has the problem of regular diesel with uh, cold starting, as crystals can form in it when it's too cold in the fuel lines. It's even worse for biodiesel, as this happens at a slightly higher temperature, which is of a pretty great concern here in Alberta due to that it gets below negative 20 on a regular basis in the winter season. It also has a shorter shelf life than most petrochemicals, which makes it harder to utilize for long-term operations or long-term storage. The abundance of feedstock in Alberta is a big pro, uh, as it's not going to have a super big impact on land usage and food and cattle prices. On the average, it uses only about 1.2% of the grain produced in Alberta right now. It's also a renewable resource, which means the resources it's made from are regenerable, unlike fossil fuels where it's a finite resource and once it's gone, it's gone. It's also biodegradable, which means if it's spilt in, an, in the environment, it will have less of an effect because it can be broken down by microorganisms and bacteria already present in that environment. Ethanol can reduce emissions by 2 to 8% depending on the feedstock it comes from. When it is sourced from a corn feedstock, it can reduce emissions by 2 to 3%, and when it's sourced from wood fiber or agricultural feedstock, it can reduce it from 5 to 8%.
the increase of this industry in Alberta will also create new jobs for construction and operation of these plants. Ethanol on average costs 12 cents less per liter than gasoline, which also makes it a more attractive component for blending. It can produce revenue through by using waste streams from other processes to create its product, which is a big bonus because it eliminates the either part, if not all, of the price of having to get rid of the waste in the first place, and is also replacing it with a income of revenue that normally wouldn't be there. To be able to make 100 million liters uh, per year, 300,000 tons of feed grain is required. Uh, this is about 700 acres of production per day, totaling about 250,000 acres to be able to keep up with production. Uh, this is a heavy amount of land use that in some regions would make it automatically just not an option. It can also cause competition through food and animal feed prices when there isn't enough land use because it's interfering with, uh, by buying the grain as fuel, it's interfering with the original market of the grain just going towards food and animal feed production. It also increases your fuel consumption by about 2% which means that fuels burn faster, so you basically need a bigger tank to account for that, and it also means it delivers less energy per liter than gas would.